Are you ready to make some babies? That's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today in our ATIT's version seven, human anatomy and physiology portion of the exam, the reproduction system. Let's get started. So what is the reproductive system? This system encompasses the primary internal reproductive organs known as the gonads, which are our testes and our ovaries. They produce various sex hormones and gametes, including sperm and eggs. Additionally, it involves glands, ducts, external genitalia, and specific areas of the brain that support the functions of the gonads and the gametes. The whole foundational purpose of these components is to facilitate mating, the combination of genetic material and reproduction. For our Life and Physical Science series, you might remember that gametes, or haploid cells, produce through meiosis, unlike the rest of the body's diploid cells that result from mitosis. We've discussed this process extensively in that video, so please feel free to revisit the T's Life and Science Comprehensive Review. But to summarize, in human reproduction, males produce sperm cells and females produce egg cells, both are a different type of gametes. When these gametes unite during sexual intercourse, the process of fertilization occurs. This fusion forms a zygote, which embarks on a journey of embryonic development, eventually leading to the birth of a new human being. Given that the reproductive system of males and females exhibit significant differences, it's most effective to study them independently. Let's begin by exploring the male reproductive system. As we previously mentioned, the primary reproductive organ in males is the testes, which produce testosterone. The testes, epididymis, and the lower part of the sporadic cord are located within a skin pouch known as the scrotum. This pouch is separated into two compartments by a central divider called the septum. The testes is also the site of sperm production. Although it might seem risky to store these vital cells in an external sac, the slightly cooler temperatures outside the body provides the optimal conditions for sperm development. Each testy is encased in two layers, the inner tunica albagina and the outer layer, the tunica vaginalis. Internally, the testes are segmented into lobules, and these lobules house tightly coiled seminiferous tubules. Sperm production from spermatogenic cells occur inside of these tubules through a process known as spermatogenesis. These seminiferous tubules eventually merge into a straight tubule that's gonna lead to our reedy testis. From that reedy testis, sperm is going to travel up through a network of ducts until it reaches that epididymis. This is where sperm are stored and mature until they're expelled during ejaculation. When ejaculation occurs, sperm cells are going to travel up our vas deferens and it's gonna go into our ejaculatory duct. Eventually, it's gonna enter into the urethra, which is the final channel for urine in the urinary system. This route enables sperm to exit the body through the penis, which is a copulatory organ designed to deliver sperm and to the female reproductive tract. Along with the scrotum, the penis forms the external genitalia of the male. In addition to the gonads and external genitalia, the male reproductive system includes accessory glands, such as the seminal glands, the prostate, and the bulbal urethral gland. Seminal vesicles are glands that are located on the surface of the bladder and secrete a fluid known as semen. It's really important to note that semen does not contain sperm cells. Instead, it mixes with sperm cells during ejaculation in the ejaculatory duct. Sperm plays a crucial role in enhancing sperm motility and fertilizing ability by providing a nutrient-rich medium that suppresses the immune response in the female reproductive tract. It ultimately destroys bacteria and aids sperm in adhering to the walls of the vagina to prevent drainage. Semen comprises the bulk of the ejaculate by volume. Next up, we have the prostate gland. And the prostate gland is positioned around the urethra near the bladder. The prostate's function is to contract during ejaculation, pushing the secretions into the urethra to mix with the ejaculate. These secretions help activate the sperm to increase fertility. And lastly, we have our bulbal urethral glands, and they're located near the prostate. 
These glands produce mucus that are going to lubricate the gland's penis, which is the tip of the penis during sexual arousal, facilitating smoother penetration and enhancing sexual intercourse comfort. Next up, let's explore the female reproduction system, which involves a more complex arrangement. Starting off with the female gonads known as the ovaries, they are responsible for producing the female gamete or egg cells known as ova, along with sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Ovaries function similarly like we see with the testes, but they're located inside the body. Each ovary is encased in a fibrous layer known as the tunica albagina, just like we saw with the testes. And it's also covered with a layer of germinal epithelium. They are anchored in place by various ligaments and receive blood supply from the ovarian arteries. Within the cortex, there are numerous follicles, each containing an immature egg known as an oocyte. This process of maturing an egg cell is known as oogenesis. As development progresses, a primordial follicle is going to mature into a vesicular follicle, characterized by a fluid-filled cavity like you can see right here, known as the antrum. Eventually, this mature follicle is going to protrude from the ovary surface, where it is going to be released during ovulation into the fallopian tubes for potential fertilization. After ovulation, that released oocyte is going to release into our fallopian tubes. Fertilization typically occurs within the fallopian tubes before the egg continues its journey down into our uterus, commonly referred to as the womb. In the uterus, the fertilized egg is going to embed itself into the uterine wall, where it remains and develops throughout the pregnancy. The cervical canal is going to lead down into the vagina, which is the female copulatory organ. The vagina is designed to receive the penis during sexual intercourse and also serves as the passageway for childbirth. In anatomical females, the external genitalia area is known as the vulva, and it comprises of several distinct parts. First up, we have the mons pubis, and this is the fatty area that sits above the pelvic bone, providing cushion and protection. It also becomes covered with pubic hair after a female reaches puberty. And then in blue, we have the labia majora, which is the outer larger skin folds that protect the internal structures of the vulva. This area is also covered with pubic hair and it contains sweat and oil secreting glands. Inside of our labia majora, we have the labia minora here in pink. These are the thinner inner folds of the skin that are hairless and encase the most delicate areas of the vulva. And then we have the vestibule, and this is nestled in our labia minora. This area houses the openings of our urethra as well as our vagina. So the urethral orifice is located right here above the vaginal orifice, and this is the opening where the urine is going to be expelled from the body. And then we have the vaginal orifice, which is situated right here. It's right below our urethral orifice, and it's the opening that serves as several key reproductive functions. This includes the passage of menstrual blood, a receptor site for sperm, and as part of the birth canal during labor. And then lastly, we have the anus. Although it's not part of the vulva, the anus is located posterior to the vaginal orifice and is the exit point for fecal matter from the body. Each one of these components are crucial for the reproductive and excretory functions of the female body, as well as providing protection against external irritants and infections. The endocrine system and reproductive system are intricately linked through the action of hormones, which regulate both the development and function of the reproductive organs. Hormones like estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone play a critical role in sexual reproduction, fertility, and pregnancy. In the brain, the hypothalamus pituitary region acts as a central command overseeing the endocrine system. The pituitary gland is divided into two parts. We have the anterior, which is in the front, and the posterior, which is in the back. Both of them branch off from our hypothalamus. The hypothalamus produces several hormones, which the posterior pituitary gland stores and later releases. Unlike its counterpart, the posterior pituitary gland does not produce its own hormones. Instead, it secretes hormones like oxytocin, which is crucial for uterine contractions during childbirth. The anterior pituitary gland, however, is a hormone powerhouse. It's capable of producing its own hormones while still being tightly regulated by that hypothalamus. 
Some of its key hormones when it comes to the reproductive system include prolactin, which stimulates milk production in the mammary glands. And there's also the follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates the formation of the ova and sperm. And then last up, we have the luteinizing hormone, which produces ovulation and androgens respectively. And lastly, as we discussed, the gonads are going to produce several important hormones. The ovaries produce estrogen, which primarily promotes the growth of the uterine lining and the development of female secondary sex characteristics. Additionally, the ovaries produce progesterone, which not only supports, but also maintains our uterine lining growth and plays a vital role in fetal development during pregnancy. The testes produce androgens, such as things like testosterone, which are essential for sperm production and the development of male secondary sex characteristics. It's important to note that while estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are present in all individuals, these hormone concentrations and primary functions vary. Typically, estrogen and progesterone are found in higher levels and play more significant roles in females, whereas androgens like testosterone are more concentrated and predominantly function in males. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding everything you're going to need to know to make them babies. As always, if you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com. There's a ton of additional resources in order to help you ace those ATITs exams. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video.